in my last video, I mentioned leaving Bryce and heading through the small town of Hatch, Utah. And there was a sense of foreboding. My truck was very well equipped to weather almost any kind of weather. I had chains with me, but as I was driving, I just got a weird kind of spiritual vibe and a weird sensation. And I stopped to take some photos in the little town. Some of the things were really quaint and interesting. But then I kind of had this feeling of people peeking out of their windows at me and looking at me. And everywhere I went, there was somebody behind a curtain, just cracking the curtain. It was almost like they knew I was coming, and I don't know why. And I'm not being paranoid. I did notice um, just sometimes three or four young women all kind of behind one curtain. But as I, I left the town, I was going to go over a kind of treacherous snow-covered pass. And by this time, it was really snowing. And at that time, I got out of my truck for one last photo, and my seatbelt mechanism broke, and my seatbelt disappeared in such a way that I couldn't fasten my seatbelt shoulder harness. So I had to stop, get my tools out, and get my long needle nose pliers to try to get to that seatbelt so I could make it work. I didn't want to drive in treacherous driving conditions without a seatbelt shoulder harness on. And it seemed like the whole time I was there, the hair on the back of my neck was standing up. And I don't know why. It was the weirdest spiritual sensation I've had in my life. Finally, I was able to uh, leave Hatch, get over the mountain pass. It was a little slick. It really was snowing pretty heavily. Well, we're definitely into the winter weather now. And again, uh, this is why I cut my time in price short. It's just right now on freezing. We're going to be starting down on the other side, but uh, uh, this is not good camping weather in anybody's book. Uh, it's a nice little dose of winter. But when I got to Cedar City, I spent the night there in my famous low-cost hotel that I've mentioned on the previous videos and wanted to get a nice early start for St. George. But when I went to the local Walmart, there was a very weird kind of thing going on. Familiar with the Mormon culture. Um, I have relatives and friends that are Mormons. I'm a born again Christian, so in different camps, uh, actually in completely different camps, but that's a whole nother story. But some of the things that were really weird was when I went into this uh, Walmart, there were these young women and they were dressed in these prairie style dresses, all in pastel colors. And there would be a group of four, five, six of them. I ran into a gentleman that had the kind of badge that an elder would have. Uh, usually the Mormon churches only use badges for those that are being sent out under authority on a mission trip. But this gentleman was in his late 60s, and he had one of those kind of uh, elder badges. He was wearing a white shirt and a black tie. And I asked him, if, what about the young women? And he gave me the impression, and he made, I think, I didn't understand it. Oh, those are Mennonites. But I didn't, didn't make sense to me. I, I didn't, they didn't look like the, the type of Mennonite uh, that's, that we see in Missouri. And we have Mennonites and Amish here in, in Missouri, and I'm pretty familiar with that culture. But this was slightly different. And so if later I just asked the, um, young people there, um, you know, why the dresses? And they said, well, we're fundamentalist Mormons. And I thought, this is very interesting. Why did that gentleman imply that they were Mennonites? Uh, was he just being misleading or he didn't want to talk about it, didn't want to address it, that it might be embarrassing to him in the church? I don't know. My Mormon friends are going to have to fill this out. I do know this is that Right before Utah became a state, there was a manifesto. It's called the 1890 Manifesto. And actually, part of my family in Arizona tied to the Woodruffs. Um, Wilford Woodruff was the president of the congregation at that time. And they felt that he came out with the 1890 Manifesto to help Utah be accepted into the United States of America, that it was just intended as a stopgap. A measure, and that in secret, these fathers of the church still um, recognize the 
fundamental values of the three preceding presidents of the church. I don't know exactly what was going on there, why I was being kind of misled by this gentleman, but it didn't sit really well with me because, and I was asking just because, you know, you don't see these young girls that are 15, 16, 17 years old, all dressed in a, you know, very wholesome way, especially in today's culture. But that's what I saw. It was a weird experience. And then when I talked to some other people, they explained about the fact that there is plural marriage um, still, or polygamy, if you want to call it that, practiced in portions of uh, Utah. And Cedar City is one of those areas where fundamental Mormonism is really big. And why somebody wearing an elder badge as an adult, I, I understand from my exposure to Mormonism, the only people that are normally badged are those young elders or maybe a mission president. So could anybody please tell me why this gentleman was misleading me? Was he possibly a, a young elder, even though he was old chronologically, that was preparing for a mission field? I couldn't really read the badge. You know, my encounter with him was pretty brief as I was shopping. But I thought it was a really strange thing. And I still had that weird feeling uh, with the hair kind of standing up on the back of my head. Later, when I got to St. George, I went to a Harbor Freight store. And there was a lady ahead of me in line checking out. And again, these young women with her, she was quite a bit older than they were, all dressed in these prairie-style pastel uh, dresses. And she started fumbling in her wallet and didn't have the money. And I was looking at what she was buying. And they were mainly things that would be used in a farming setting or to maintain an older vehicle. So I just paid the money. I, I probably should have given the Lord Jesus Christ some witness. But I was still processing all this. I didn't quite realize what I was coming across and how this uh, was processing in my life. I still don't. So any help would be appreciated.